distance variable, um, define the method. So the main thing of the clustering of this supervised clustering is the like distance method. So how can you measure the distance between two points? There have been like many method for this thing. So one of them is like Euclidean method. For Euclidean method, it defines the distance between two points as a like a Euclidean way. So between A to C, it will be like A square plus B square. So if you can just Google it. This is the also the Euclidean distance. So if you go to position one to two, it takes position one to two and like how do you go there? And it takes all the square value and take the square root of it. There is another one called um, Manhattan distance. So this is like a it sums up like how many blocks you travel. It doesn't like connect A to B. So if you go this yellow way, it will sum up like all these yellow values. So this is, there is like other different types of distance values. So first one, we try with the equation. So first try to measure the distance matrix. So for distance matrix, we use the function called DIST or distance. So just calculate the distance matrix. So you can see a distance matrix here of class distance and it calculates all the variables between. So we can see the numbers here. And so now we try to fit a hierarchical clustering and we choose a method word. There's so many methods here you can choose from like so word is the first method, then there is like single, complete, average, you can choose any of them. So if you can choose word, we can see you, it has been done, and we can plot the cluster, and the clustering looks like here. So this is the like hierarchical clustering using the word method, and from this thing, it's pretty tough to define like, which one belongs to which cluster. So we know like we're looking for three clusters, we can define like, okay, so from this one, try to find like those three clusters like we're looking for. So we can do that. So we can do that with a function called cut tree. So let's look into it. So cut tree is like cut tree, like a so this is like a tree-like structure. So cut tree divides the tree into group of data. So the use of cut tree like give the tree functions and how many groups you want to divide. So we just divide it in three and put that here. And you can see like it separates the cluster into three. Mm -hmm. But still, the graph is not pretty. You cannot see all these values, and you cannot define like okay, which are right or which are wrong, because we know the exact value. So to make it more prettier or more useful, we use ggplot and car space and tend extent. So there's like.
first try to measure the distance matrix again. So this time we will use previously we used EP again. This time we will just try that. We use a different hierarchical clustering method here, like maybe complete or average. So now the clustering looks a little bit different. Now you can see like the sub P section, like mm -hmm. where each one split. So you can again do a cut free here. You can define like where each of the same one. Mm, that looks like your old one. It then looks like my old one. So let's make this one more beautiful. So if you look into the final T plot cluster, it looks like this. So this is like much more robust graph, and you can see like where each of the cluster looks like. And you can find the error from easily. So it defines three clusters as three colors. So these three colors, pink, green, and blue. You can see the pink are here, green are here, and the top of the blue. So you can see like this is a blue cluster, and here you can see this is a pink. So that's the error one. And you can see some of the error here, like blue, here the green is mixed. And you can see the green is like pretty much here because the green they define the same green. Very correct. So this way it gives you like a more robust way to define the clustering. You can see where each one is located and you can find out like okay what are the errors and everything. So this one we did with ggplot and with color space. So for this one we first define the color branches. So like we want to do a color branch, like each branch will have a different color than I manually do a coloring like red, green, and blue with this function and give a label. And finally, I did something like with the labeling, like making the label small. If I do with a, like label one here, so it's like too big. It overlap with one another, so we cannot see anything. So I just redo the level here, like zero point five or zero point six, and I redo the margin. And now let's see. Let's look at this. So this is like hierarchical clustering with the method word and you can try other cluster and you can like link them between them and see like if there's a difference between them what is the what are the difference and we can move on there also we can also include heat map in clustering so and so the metric you'd want would be to get your uh, misclassification misclassification error rate yeah. You could try lots of different distance mm -hmm. metrics yeah. and evaluate your error rate since you already knew the right answer. Right, yeah. So, yeah, if we know the right answer, then we think we can do that. Yeah. So, another one we look into heat map clustering. So, it's a, like more advanced clustering. So, now, like, you can cluster using one value, two value, or multiple values. 
so it will give and this heat map plus time will give you an idea like which value is actually giving the right clustering or something so for this heat map two function it's called it's in g plots it's older version of gg plot and this is So this is a heat map and the cluster. You can see those like beautiful heat clusters here. And you can see like all the variables we look into in the bottom. So from here, like you can see petal view. It gives a like a red color. So for all these three species, the petal view doesn't differ very much. So that's why like, there's no change or very small change. Then you can see petal length, yellow, red, and mix. So maybe this one gives the most useful information about these three species. And then sepal width is pretty much similar to petal width. So there is no that much of difference. Sepal length, some differences happen. So you can see like okay, maybe the petal length and the sepal length is the two variables that define these clusters very well. Petal width maybe is not useful that much. And from this bar chart here, you can see where all this error happens. Like, you can see error happen here, error happens here, some error happen here. So this is another way to do a heat map in, with the Irish data. So in the heat map, you just define like row, var row variable is dendrogram, column variable is an NA. So that's why like, we we'll make sure the column is not ordered. We we'll define the margin, we we'll define the color, and we we'll define how we want to see density plot or some other way. And row side colors, just define the label colors of the dendrogram. And uh, yeah, that's so far for the cluster, I think. Yeah. So, Questions? I think. Yes. So, what's the difference between clustering and classification? Uh, I think they're the same. Mm -hmm. So, clustering is like a type of classification. So, you can. Uh, so. The difference will be like clustering or classification and regression. So regression, you are trying to find a values. So where classification or clustering, you are trying to find a like a class or type. Categorical variable. Categories of variable or something like that. Okay, so if you don't have any problems, so we can try some other. In clustering, was there a way to automate it so that it would go through and try all your different distance metrics and then evaluate this classification error rate? Is there a carrot kind of thing or a mass kind of thing to compare them all? Okay, yeah. So we, I just try to do different clustering. So it's mm -hmm. average, and you can see like there's lots of error here. Yeah. So previously, maybe the error like distributed so it's like particular error is happening here mm -hmm. so it depends on the like different type of clustering mechanism and yeah we you can do automated things so there is a like pretty useful clustering technique so so for this one we maybe have to write a loop mm -hmm. so like it finds something So define something like him. So you plug yeah. in and Manhattan and run a loop on this thing. So mm -hmm. it goes in each type and 
take the values and pull the cluster in here. One by two. Yeah, one by two would probably be better. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is like two methods of clustering. One using Manhattan, then another one using Eclipse. So this is just a simple loop. You can mm -hmm. do more also. X is taken and I'm a I. That's your index. X and 1 to 2 is what you want in a for loop. Mm -hmm. Which is the side now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 1 I going to. And so many times in a problem like this, if you had 10,000 uh, values, 10,000 observations that were unsupervised, so you don't truly really know the right answer. But if you could go through and manually classify the first 100 and evaluate which uh, method is the best distance metric and look at your miss classification error rate, then you'd be able to address which is the best one for what I'm doing. And then you can go and use that method on all of them. So you can use a small subset where you have to manually go decide.
And what's the height in the dendrogram usually? Because you can use that number. Yeah, so... It's a can, measure of similarity. It's a measure of similarity. So if you want to arch the thing, so yeah. you redefine a certain... Generally, it's zero. Mm -hmm. But you can define like one, two, three, or minus one. Minus one is main same thing as zero. So like here I use hanging height mm -hmm. is like zero point one. Yeah. Because in the classification dendrograms like that, lots of times you want to use that value. It's analogous to finding uh, the knee in the curve for how many groups you want to pay attention to. Oh yeah, yeah. So now they're not hanging in the same size. Mm -hmm. the clustering difference we get. Yeah, and these are three different clustering methods. Three different clustering methods, and so since it's hard to evaluate which one you should use, mm -hmm. if you were able to classify things classify. manually for a small set of your data, to choose to identify which is the best uh, a distance metric to use, and then you'll go ahead and you can apply it to all of them. Even with numerical data, mm -hmm. many times it can be nice to uh, try and cluster or classify using simple 0, 1 results yeah. for things and first and only use regression second to try and get a more detailed understanding. Yeah. Clustering is really useful. Like if you go look at Francis data also, you can cluster. So you can see like how behavior change happens between different groups of time and you can like classify those time and like develop different models between them or like assign different variables like something like that so like <clears throat> we do some time series modeling of the power data and we can define like weekday and weekend is like very much different so you can define like some variables weekday and weekend so it can develop different models for weekday and weekend so mm -hmm. This way we can use clustering. It's actually self-similarity analysis, another name for this, mm -hmm. is a good way of doing exploratory data analysis. Find similarities among things so you can more easily identify the differences. that done by PC analysis so like if you give some variables so do a PC analysis and it should give you a what are the variables you look into and define the PC analysis and so like how many, what is the percentage of variable it defines and it represents like first to PC components of this thing here. So 
I find this is really useful but for my analysis. Did you specify three components? Uh, for this one? Or? Yeah. So it does a penis clustering here. Yeah. And it works on the penis clustering. So you can see penis clustering. Mm -hmm. Do you have three? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three right there. Run by six. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe something not useful for this case. So for six, you can see like it defines number one set also as like four and five. There's nothing four and five here, so that's still, a good separation. Still, it does the separation for number one is very good. For number two, it defines 21. But there's a this one. Is one here, but rate is small. Mm -hmm. Seven, zero, that's okay. 32, zero, zero is okay. The problem is here, number six. Yeah. 22, 17. You can see here, like. Number six is which circle? Pink one. I think this one, one there. This yeah. one here. So it's like all over the places. So like some of the sepal length is not good, so we can do uh, only weak thing. So if we just look into So number three and number four is the petal, and if we just go back to the heat map. So we can see that maybe sepal width and sepal length is the main thing. So we can do this one just based on sepal width and sepal length. Mm -hmm. Change the cluster in here. One, two, three. So, two different So, yeah, that's here, that's like far mm -hmm. better. Yeah. So, still like. Two and four 
this is so far like just a basic introduction of clustering or classification. There is more like if you need more help or anything with this script and the data, just send me an email so I can help you. Mm -hmm. Thank you everyone. Cool. Thank you.